Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Paris. Today we are going to be discussing my August wrap up. I was about to say TBR. My August wrap up. I went through a reading slump. I read a book this month that was more than five stars. It was six, seven, eight, nine, ten stars. It was amazing. And I was having a very hard time picking up a book after finishing that one, but we'll get into it. I read six books and I DNF'd one. Let's get into it. So to start off the month, I read Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan, and this was in my Instagram Picks My Reads for the Week video. So I did give a little bit more context on the book in that video, so if you're interested, you can go and check that out. But basically, Before I Let Go is about Josiah and Yasmin, and they were once married. They have been divorced for two years. They also have two kids and they own a business together. So we kind of get to explore their post-divorce dynamic I guess you could say. Throughout the book we kind of get an understanding on what led to their divorce. Throughout the whole book you're basically in the present minus one chapter and the prologue. Those are the only times we get like a full glimpse into the past. I did really like this book. I felt like it had a lot of meaning to it. It was a book that was very deep and meaningful. There's talk about depression in this book, grief. It kind of sheds light on therapy for men as well. Therapy for both men and women but there is more of a focus on men going to therapy and children as well a little bit personally i didn't quite feel the chemistry the way i would have wanted to when they started to kind of wonder about their feelings toward one another i felt like it was very much physical like a lot of what was discussed in detail was a physical attraction more than deep-rooted feelings i would have wanted more emotion in what they were saying about each other i cared more about the story and the growth of the characters more than I cared about the romance. So I did give this book a 3.75 stars. I was kind of skimming through the book to give myself some spoilers to push myself to continue reading. So I think I would give this a 3.75. I will also mention if you're going to read this book, look up trigger warnings, especially moms. I would say to look up trigger warnings if you're pregnant or if your mom look up trigger warnings for this book. So after Before I Let Go, I read Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber, which was also in my Instagram pics, my reads for the week video. And this was a highly, 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 highly anticipated read for me this month. Once Upon a Broken Heart is about Evangeline Fox and she is in love with a boy who is marrying someone else. She goes to the Prince of Hearts to make a deal to basically stop this wedding from happening. The Prince of Hearts is Jax, who is actually from the Caraval trilogy. She doesn't realize that making a deal with him can kind of set her up in a bad situation. Honestly, this book was not what I expected it to be whatsoever. I enjoyed the book. I didn't think it was a bad book, but I think because I have seen so many amazing reviews. I've seen practically only 4.5 and 5 star ratings for this book. I was expecting to fall in love with this book. I did the same thing with this one and I was like skimming to kind of get an idea of what was going to happen to push myself to continue reading. I did enjoy it though. It was a very fun fairy tale esque type of story. I will say this is ultimate slow burn. I wouldn't go into this book expecting a lot of romance. There is some tension but I didn't feel a ton of romance in this book which is not a bad thing but I think I went into it expecting a lot of romance but that's not what it was. I did like it but it's not memorable to me which really sucks to say. It's not very memorable. I don't really like care for it that much. My mind might change a bit if I read the next one. So yeah. I think it's like a 3.75 for me. Next, I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This is a standalone, but it is an interconnected standalone with Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. Yours Truly, I gave four stars. Yours Truly is about Brie, who is a doctor. She's going through a divorce. She has a brother who is sick and she's just overall really stressed and unhappy. She meets Dan Daniel. Daniel's from Part of Your World, my bad. Jake. Wow, I didn't even, I would have never guessed that his name was Jacob. I totally forgot. <laughs> Jacob is someone who deals with anxiety, so he comes off very standoffish. Jacob needs a fake girlfriend. So we have the fake dating trope. We have workplace. So Jacob needs a girlfriend for his brother's wedding. But they get really deep into the fake dating, like very deep into it. And I know a lot of it was because he really liked her, but it got a little deep where I was like, if this was real life, this would be a bit wild. They had like this relationship where they turned into like pretty much best friends 
and then grew into lovers which was just really cute there was this one specific moment and if you've read it you know what i'm talking about the taco bell moment to me was like one of the cutest things that happened in the entire thing so next this is the book that ruined everything for me i read fourth wing my last video was me reading fourth wing so if you watch that you already know i gave this book five stars but i would give this book a million stars infinity stars i don't even know i just five stars doesn't cut it for this book i have mentioned before that i think a court of mist and fury is like my favorite book that i've read this year i don't think i can only name one book my favorite book anymore because fourth wing has entered the chat this is the reason that i ended up in a bad reading slump so i think my reading slump slowly started off after reading a court of silver flames and then after hitting this one i had the hardest time picking up a book fourth wing is about violet Sorengale. she trained her entire life to become a scribe in this war college but her mother ends up forcing her to become a rider so the riders are the people who ride dragons basically <laughs> so we have dragons in this fantasy book you are put in very dangerous situations it is life or death being in the writer's quadrant when violet enters this war college she is told to stay away from this one guy there's some like family history there a little bit of rivalry between families his name is zayden i don't know where else to go with that because i don't want to give any other context but that i have never read a book about dragons it was not the dragons that sold me on this book it was just the story i felt entertained pretty much from front to back i would love to reread this before iron flame comes out i kid you not i pre-ordered iron flame 60 pages into this because i need my hands on that as soon as it comes out after i read fourth wing i read final offer by lauren asher on kindle unlimited and this is the third and last book in the dreamland billionaire series this one is specifically about cal his grandfather's task to him in his will to receive his inheritance was to go back to this lake house that he spent a lot of time at when he was younger he had to sell this house at the house we have lana who is the love of his life cal himself he suffers from alcoholism and we kind of watch him battle with that i really loved the relationship between cal and lana's daughter it was just it was so beautiful i really loved cal i think cal was my favorite brother out of the three he had the most character development and his character development was solely focused on himself and it had nothing to do with him just being in love and then he wanted to change for that person he obviously wanted to change for lana but he did think a lot about himself and how he needs to change for himself and i really loved that so that was one major reason why i liked him more i felt like he was also just fun and funnier he wasn't a grump like the other two but he did deal with a lot of dark things compared to the other two i gave final offer four stars it was enjoyable i liked it it was cute so after final offer i read the serpent in the wings of night and this is also on kindle unlimited and this is by carissa broadbent and unfortunately this is the book that i dnf'd i think i'm at like 11 percent and I DNF'd it. Again, I was going through a bit of a reading slump. I'm still surprised that I even gave Final Offer four stars. I just had the hardest time getting to that book. I felt like I was dragging my feet. I do really want to read this book. I've heard good things. I'm not DNFing it completely. I'm definitely DNFing it for now. And I will get back to it eventually. I think I'm finally out of my reading slump. Because I finished Divine Rivals this morning by rebecca ross and i loved it i gave this book five stars the vine rivals is about iris and roman and they both work at the same paper but they are rivals they're competing for this promotion to be a columnist they have this really fun banter between each other iris's brother goes to war and she starts writing letters to her brother on her typewriter that was gifted to her by her grandmother and these letters will disappear after she's written them and one day i think it's after a couple months she gets a response back but it's not from her brother it's from roman but she doesn't know it's roman they write back and forth and they just kind of have like deep conversations and they connect really well this book didn't go the way i expected it but i did love it i loved this story so much i did like the aspect of the war and i love 
I'm realizing more and more I love historical romance. This book was written beautifully. I think it was just such an amazing story. I will say I'm shocked that this is YA. Everyone says it doesn't read like YA and it absolutely it does not read like YA. The one scene that you would classify as spice it was a little more detailed than I would expect a YA book to be. I wouldn't say it was like overly sexual or anything, but it was very emotional and it was beautifully written. But I'm surprised that this is YA. I know a lot of people like to compare this and Fourth Wing. I think on BookTok and Bookstagram, these two books are like the top fantasy romances that came out. I would never compare these two books. There is nothing to compare about the two of them. Historical fantasy romance and then just straight up fantasy romance about dragons. Like these are completely different stories. Divine Rivals is more of a beautiful story. I think Fourth Wing is more of like an entertaining, action-packed, fun book. They both have an element of war in them, but I love them both. I'm so happy that I came out of this month with two five stars. Even though this was not my greatest reading month in terms of how I felt, it was a successful reading month. Now, I want to talk to you guys about the books I want to read in September. I have zero excuse to not pick up these books. You will see some of these are a repeat from the August TBR, but that's okay. First, I have The Assassin's Blade and Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. So these are part of the Throne of Glass series. And I already know someone is going to say, do not read Assassin's Blade first and to read it third or fourth or whatever reading order you prefer but I am going to read Assassin's Blade first. I believe I'm ready to dive into the Throne of Glass series. I am very very nervous because it's a long series to get into and I need to read Crescent City before the third book in that series comes out and from what I've heard it's best to read the Throne of Glass series before Crescent City so I need to finish this so I can get into Crescent City. If you are wondering what this is about I have zero idea but I love Akatar series so I think I would love Sarah J Mass's writing in this one as well. All I know is that we have some sort of assassin. Next I have The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber which is the second book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. I'm scared to read a book that everyone rates five stars. Next I have Seven Days in June by Tia Williams and this is a library book. I believe this is a second chance. I'm really looking forward to this. I also do love that this is a black author and we have black characters as well. After reading Divine Rivals. I'm more in a historical romance type of vibe. So I do think I'm finally going to put The House of Eve by Shadika Johnson back on my TBR after neglecting it for months. This is a historical fiction. There is some romance in it. This book takes place in like the 1950s. I think it also kind of goes into the 80s as well. So those are the books that I want to read for this month. I do have another one I was thinking of putting on my list but I do not want to push it. I already have five books here. These are all priority for me. That is my August wrap up and my September TBR. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe as well and I will see you in the next one.